Okay, we're now looking at the stabilization problem. In the stabilization problem, we have a control loop that looks like this. And this is not the only kind of control loop that you have. But generally speaking, we're going to have a, a closed loop control. And we're going to have some kind of controller in the loop. Okay, so whether I have a reference input here or I have signals, uh, for example, the control uh, Y going directly into the control, there are different other forms for control. But generally speaking, we're going to end up with a loop and we want to investigate the stability of a loop, basically. So under what conditions is the system stable? If P is unstable, how does this change? So clearly, we would want to design a controller so that the closed loop transfer function, and this is the complementary, this is the sensitivity function, so that the sensitivity function is stable. Okay, So this results in no unstable, and we want to do so in a way that there are no unstable pole zero cancellations, and all transfer functions are causal. So basically, these are the three conditions that, that determine internal stability. If our sensitivity function is stable, if there are no unstable pole zero cancellations within the system, and all transfer, fun transfer functions are causal. This then de determines the stability of the system. So these are three conditions that determine stability of a system. So now I'm going to kind of break this down a little bit in terms of looking at the poles and zeros, or rather the, the, the transfer function um, numerators and denominator polynomials. So the plant I'm going to factor into two parts. The denominator I'm going to factor into two parts. And generally speaking, we're going to be looking at these things in terms of uh, stability. Okay, So I'm going to assume that N NP1, DP1 are stable. Okay, And the controller then is going to be given by this expression. It's going to have the numerator is going to have two parts, the denominator is going to have two parts. And I'm going to choose the numerator and denominator of the controller this way. That is, this is going to cancel that, and this uh, is going to cancel that. So we have cancellations going on, but the cancellations are stable cancellations. Okay. So when I multiply, when I put these two in cascade with one another as transfer functions, so here we're looking at as, again a single input, single output system clearly. Then I get this. Notice that there are no pole zero cancellations occurring in this. There have been cancellations, but they're stable cancellations. And so this is what we get. When we now put this into, uh, into our sensitivity function, this, this is what we get. We get this expression. So this is the basic stabilization problem. And notice that this transfer function can have no root. This denominator can have no roots in the open left half plane. I'm sorry, open right half plane. So we have stability when this closed loop transfer denominator has zeros only in the left half plane. That's what this is saying. BCL of S is equal to zero. That implies that the real part of S that does that is strictly negative. Okay, so this is saying all the closed loop poles are in the open left half plane. That's what this is saying. So that's what we have for stability. Now notice then as we look at this, no unstable pole cancellation implies that for every P, okay, so here what we're looking at is what happens if we applied uh, the controller that introduced cancellations. So in, ge we, in general, we don't have to introduce cancellations. We can work with the original system and not do pole zero cancellations. In which case, this is still our sensitivity function. And instead of having NP1, NP2, DP1, DP2, DC1, DC2, um, instead of having all that, we just work with DP and DC. So no unstable pole cancellation implies that for every, every um, pole, of this product that is in the open in the closed right half plane that's what this is saying it's either in the right half plane or on the imaginary axis okay that's what this is saying and this is saying it is a root of that polynomial dpdc okay so this is saying right half plane pole 
of the of this product. So if there is such a value pi that makes this zero, that means this quantity cannot be zero. Otherwise, we would have a pole zero cancellation in the right half in the closed right, right half plane. So if I now look at the sensitivity function evaluated at pi, this is the sensitivity function, and wherever I have s, I've replaced it with pi. Now notice that because of the fact that I have this 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 pole at pi, this is zero. The denominator has this zero, and it has this non-zero. Okay, since this is so, the numerator is zero, the denominator is non-zero. The overall result then is zero. Okay, so so this is this is the um, the result that we get when we have if our original system had a pole. That is, when I say original, the open loop transfer function, which include both of these guys. So notice that, that the controller itself could have a pole in the right half plane, and it still is going to satisfy this. Or the plant could have a pole in the right half plane. It's still going to satisfy this. That's, so the sensitivity function evaluated in an unstable pole of the system is equal to zero. Okay? So the, the, um, if we look at the complementary sensitivity function, I'm sorry. We look at the sensitivity function. The sensitivity function uh, has, again, if I look at the product of these two and I look at the zeros in the right half plane and on the imaginary axis. So that's what this is saying. Any zero in the, in the open and the closed right half plane. So this is a zero of these two transfer functions. Okay, that's what this is saying. So, and incidentally, such a zero is often referred to as a non-minimum phase zero. And you can actually look at the phase of these transfer functions at those points and, and see, and that, that's how it's defined, but it's, it's a, often referred to as a non-minimum phase zero. So if we have a non-minimum phase zero, notice that in order to have no unstable pole, uh, zero cancellation, in this case, this cannot be zero. And so if we look at these two guys now, this again, this is the sensitivity function evaluated at zi. So this is not zero, this is not zero, but this is zero, which means I have this quantity over this quantity, and it, we get exactly one. So the sensitivity function at such zeros is identically equal to one. And so if we look now at these, the z here is the set of non-minimum phase zeros of this open loop system. Script P here is the set of unstable poles of the of these two guys. Okay, so Z is the unstable zeros, unstable, or non-minimum phase zeros, and P is the right half is the unstable poles. So the stability criteria in the system is internally stable, then that is the sensitivity the system is uns internally stable if and only if the sensitivity function is finite in magnitude for all real for all s in the closed right half plane so another way of saying it is that the system has uh, has finite h infinity norm that's actually what's happening here okay so so in the right half plane the magnitude of the transfer function is finite and on the imaginary axis. This also says the sensitivity function is equal to 1 for all non-minimum phase zeros and the sensitivity function is equal to 0 for all unstable poles. We, so we've just gone through and shown that the system is internally stable if and only if we have these three conditions. So this is the stability, the internal stability stabilization problem and this Looking at stability from this is called interpolation. That is, we're looking at the transfer function and how it evaluates out at various values of s. Okay, and so this is this approach is is a is a way of looking at the stability problem using what's called interpolation. So now we're going to come back and look at the problem of unstable systems.